The Tom Woods Show, episode 850. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hey, all you shavers out there, Harry's wants to send you a free trial set. Razor handle, five blade cartridge, and shaving gel. Best shave you ever had, just pay for shipping. Check it out at harrys.com slash woods. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here. Still not quite 100%. Still under the weather, but somewhat better. Certainly better than a few days ago, that's for sure. So little by little, I'm getting out of whatever the heck this thing is. But I'm well enough to do the show, and I'm very glad to welcome Sheriff Richard Mack back to the show. We haven't spoken to him since episode 489, so quite some time. He's a former sheriff of Graham County, Arizona, and he's become an activist, a liberty activist, as a, a former sheriff. And in fact, to that end, he created something called the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. And I've spoken to their convention before, and I support them very much, and I recommend them highly. It's his view that the sheriff has a role to play in maintaining the liberty of the people who live in his area against the oppression of the government. So he's quite interesting. He's, he took a case all the way to the uh, Supreme Court and won. We talked about that in the last time that he was on the show. So a lot of great stuff he does. And right now he has a brand new initiative that you can uh, check out. It's thefreedomcoalition.com. And it has to do with the problem that we a lot of Americans face where they've been made into criminals, not because they've done anything that a normal person would recognize as criminal, but because they've run afoul of some bureaucratic mandate or some quirky bureaucratic requirement or or just just the the spite of a federal bureaucrat. Like whatever it is, it's some crazy Kafka esque situation they find themselves in. And it this is a, in other words, it's a way that ordinary Americans are made into criminals even though no normal person would think they've done anything. And Sheriff Mack wants to shine a light on this and help these poor people out. So let's talk about that. Sheriff Mack, welcome back to the show. Tom, it is always good to be with you, my friend. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Well, I'm checking out the freedomcoalition.com, and you've got a petition, There is no liberty with innocence in prison. And you're talking about people who have found themselves on the wrong end of some bureaucratic order or some some bureaucracy run amok, people who have done things that by no normal definition would be considered crimes. No normal person would think these people had done a thing wrong. And you are highlighting that in particular. Why don't, why don't you describe your this uh, – you, because you do a better job than, than I can. Is this your initiative? And uh, and what? How would you describe exactly what it is you want Americans to know uh, as a result of this campaign? Uh, on the first day, it was my initiative and uh, that of the CSPOA, our Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. We still have our website. We still have our organization going very strong. But too many of these incidents kept coming to our attention, and people actually involved in these. Uh, federal victimizations and federal crimes have actually uh, called me. Uh, the Amish farmer in Kentucky actually uh, paid for me to come out to his home. Uh, he paid my way. And he said, I want to talk to you about this and I want you to see this. And I said, okay. Uh, so I went and I, it was Bath, B-A-T-H County, a very small county. I met with the sheriff also. He had like, I think, three deputies. Uh, he's just a good old boy. His name, uh, everybody just calls him Tuffy. His, he's had that nickname since he was a little boy. And I say that because just to give you a feel for where I was, it was a very backwoods area, very beautiful area. And this Amish farmer with his 25 grandkids uh, and his children that all run a family business, they do uh, home construction. And this uh, particular guy, uh, Sam Gerard. Very good man. Uh, he, he, uh, his family, his wife and daughters provided us a fantastic Amish lunch. And uh, I'm sure you're jealous of that because it was fantastic. And all of these people mentioned in this and all of these other hundreds of calls that we've taken from the CSPOA from people over the years saying, 
how come I can't get anybody to help me? I am innocent or a, a, a wife will call and say my husband's in prison and it's over the stupidest thing. And Tom, you and I both do public presentations all over and, and people will come up and say just the most outlandish things to us and say, I need your help. Would you please look at this situation? And I, I honestly, I'll have to tell you, some of them I absolutely do not believe. And then I personally looked into the Hammond situation, which is on our list the ranchers from Burns, Oregon, uh, who started that, whose plight, they didn't start it, whose plight started the entire occupation there in the Malia Refuge building with the, with the Bundys and others. But the, the Hammonds were actually charged with domestic terrorism because they were burning debris and foliage on their own uh, ranch uh, land, and it got out of control and it burned up about another 100 acres or more, just barely over 100 of public lands. Now, Tom, you know I was sheriff for eight years in southeast Arizona. We have a beautiful mountain and, and lots of forest land. And I'll tell you right now, while I was sheriff at least three or four different times, the uh, Forest Service and BLM did control burns that got out of hand and burned up thousands and thousands of acres. Do you know that not one of them uh, was charged with domestic terrorism or destruction of public property or malicious mischief or any crime whatsoever. Um, not even uh, the old one that uh, disorderly conduct that police use when they don't know what else to charge people with. And so these types of crimes from the federal government occur all the time. In fact, the EPA, what was it, two years ago, dumped a, a million gallons of mining sludge and uh, toxic waste into the uh, Animus River, which uh, joins into the Colorado River. And uh, no one got charged. But if you and I had done that, we would probably still be sitting in prison. Now, the, the horrible thing of all of these is we know in law enforcement, we only detect about 10% of the crime. So there are hundreds and hundreds more of these incidents. And we want to form a commission and have Congress and the president form a commission that we will gladly uh, participate on and determine how many IRS cases, BLM cases, EPA cases, BATF, all of this alphabet soup uh, uh, bureaucracies in Washington, as you alluded to, how many of these people, how many of these uh, agencies have committed more crimes and victimized more American citizens during the past 10, 15, 20 years? We want a review of that. In fact, Tom, I will tell you, I don't believe there's anything more important that you and I or anybody else could be doing than freeing people who should not be in prison. And that's what we're doing. I want to read people what's at the end of your petition here, because in, in your petition that, that they can see and, and sign yes. at thefreedomcoalition.com, you end with this. Therefore, we solemnly request that an independent committee be established to review all arrests and incarcerations from the IRS, BLM, FDA, BATF, EPA, USFS, and all other bureaucracies in order to free any similar victims. We have many Americans and public officials who are eager to work on this committee. In the meantime, we implore President Trump to grant pardons to these aforementioned people and restore them to their families. Because you give examples and you talked about uh, some of them uh, right. just a minute ago right. here in the in the petition. But, but what would you say to somebody who came along and said, well, you know, look, of course there are going to be a few outlying cases, but this is overwhelmingly not the norm. <laughs> the norm is that these are decent people who are trying to do what's best for the environment or for whatever they're tasked with doing, and you're you're muddying the waters by making it seem as if Americans are put upon by an oppressive government. I see. What did Colonel Blake call that um, on MASH? Horse hockey. Hmm. <laughs> First of all, if it's one person, it's one too many, and we should all be dedicated to the one. Just like Rosa Parks, who was one person who refused to sit at the back of the bus, even though her fellow black Americans on that bus and uh, in her neighborhood were mad at her for doing it. They didn't want to cause trouble. If it's your father or if it's you or if it's your wife that sits in prison because, heavens forbid, that person offended a bureaucrat. And that's really what this is, Tom. 
Uh, I've worked around these people. I've worked around police long enough to know what these arrests are. These are arrests to show who's boss, to show the rest of the people, when I tell you to do something, you do it. That's what these arrests are about. These are uh, failure to comply with an order from a stupid bureaucrat who thinks he's God's gift to uh, the world, and you don't do what he says and bow down and kiss his ring, and he's going to find a way to put you in jail. And that's what this is. Uh, and clearly, the Amish farmer who faces 48 years in prison, in fact, that's a headline out of a local newspaper in the uh, district where he lives in Kentucky, faces 48 years in prison. Now, do you know the average sentence uh, in America for murder? I'm afraid to ask. 11 to 13 years for murder. And, and he's facing 48 years. Now, I never really described what supposedly his crime is to you, did I? No, let's hear it. People should know. Okay. This Amish farmer, out of his garden, makes a salve, a kind of like a Vaseline, but it's a little bit more solid in texture. And he makes it out of chickweed. Now, oddly enough, my wife looked that up on Amazon, and she was able to f- order some chickweed salve from Amazon, and we got it to our house in four hours. It's quite common. I've never heard of chickweed before until I met with this Amish farmer last summer. Uh, And he just says, look, this is what I've done for a long time. It's part of our family. It's part of our religion. I've never hurt anybody. I've never had any complaints. He does sell it. Uh, But he was making it first and wasn't, but then a lot of people wanted it. Um, He kind of put it out there that he had it. His only violation is that he didn't get permission from the FDA to have this salve that is made by several other different companies. And so uh, maybe they complained, maybe the pharmaceuticals complained, who knows who complained. I don't know if anybody did really, but I do know that no one has been hurt by it. And I will tell you that I've used it myself. I even gave it to a reporter from the Washington Times to put on, a, a Washington Post, sorry, to put on a little scratch that he had on his finger. He did it hesitatingly because he'd never heard of this stuff. But he, he actually said it made it feel a little bit better. That's all this is. It's for the skin. And all this could have been settled if the FDA had just gone to him and said, look, you can keep doing your business. We don't want to interrupt what you're doing. We know your religious beliefs. You don't really deal with government that much. If you'll just put a warning label like we require from cigarettes and beer and alcoholic beverages that kill millions of people every year that the FDA completely lets people use, as long as there's a little warning that says this could kill you, his would have said this product is not FDA approved. That's all it's got to say. And this whole thing would be over. But no, I admit it right up front, okay? He did not obey the FDA and all their little writs and all their little motions and and then their, their warrants for his arrest. He didn't summonses, uh, subpoenas. He didn't obey any of it. First of all, the, you got to remember his Amish beliefs on a lot of that. Amish really don't deal with government on anything. They're off the grid. They don't ask the government for anything. They don't really answer to the government either. I'm sorry, but his religious beliefs, whether we like them or not, supersede that. They supersede regulatory uh, policies unless he's hurting somebody. And he's not hurting anybody. It never has. And seriously, he's been charged with conspiracy. And I have, I've been very close to the situation. I can see nowhere where this man conspired with somebody else to make this ointment without permission from the FDA. He did it all on his own. And there's no conspiracy. He was doing this way before the FDA found out about it. So how is that a conspiracy when he just kept doing what he was doing all along? They're actually charging him with fraud and conspiracy, and seriously, uh, they want to put him away for life. And I'm sorry, uh, I don't think any decent American and the president and Congress or any other group or entity or whether it's government or civic or just a group of people like you and me, Tom, I just don't think we can allow this to happen in America anymore. All right. I've got a question I want to ask about the role of the sheriff in all this, and we'll do that after we thank our sponsor. I drive my family crazy and have fun doing it, by the way, 
by telling them that the store brand is just as good as the name brand. And they're telling me, get out of town. Come on, we all know the store brand stinks. Now, they admit that for things like salt, it doesn't really matter what the brand is. But they say, for things that matter, you got to get the real brand. Well, I think that is a good general principle. For things that matter, you got to look out for quality. For example, sleeping, you got to have a good mattress. But also, your shave. You do that every day. There's a potential you could be making yourself into a bloody mess. And it conveys a look to people. It makes you look either professional or hopeless. It makes you comfortable or miserable and stingy. So you got to get the best. What's the best? Harry's. I have been using Harry's razors with tremendous results. Vastly better than blades I've used in the past. I gave up on blades. Wouldn't even use them anymore. Smooth, close, comfortable, beautiful. And yet you won't pay outrageous prices for it. And in fact, they're going to give you a free trial set for nothing. Just pay a tiny shipping fee, and they're going to send you the razor handle of your choice, five-blade cartridge, and shaving gel. It's free when you sign up. That's how confident Harry's is in the quality of their blades. Want to redeem this free trial offer? Go to harrys.com slash woods. All right, here's my question. I can see that with this initiative, you want to bring, you want to shine a light on all this. You want to make people aware of what's going on. You want to bring pressure to bear on these particular cases and on these agencies to try to see justice done and to try to prevent other outrages like this from taking place in the future. Correct. But I want to ask specifically, is there a role that the, in your view, that the sheriff can play before it gets to this point? Well, now, you know me and you know my work, and that's the reason I met with the sheriff uh, in Bath County. And I actually prepared a letter for him to send off, in fact, two letters, one kind of innocuous and mild, another one quite a bit stronger in its wording to the federal government. He actually wanted the stronger one, and he signed it. And I mailed it to the court, the judge, the FDA, and to U.S. Marshals. And it said, uh, Sheriff Snedeker here and this letter, uh, I know you're kind of after my constituent, Sam Gerard. And I want you to know that he's under the protective custody of the Bath County Sheriff's Office. And you are not to come in my county and go get him for any reason unless you come through me. Well, they seemed to back off. And he even saw uh, federal agents in his county, some undercover looking plainclothes guys. And because um, he knows his county. I mean, he knows his county. He's lived there all his life. And it's a very small county. And uh, he thought they were kind of uh, monitoring him. Uh, the sheriff himself, uh, but he pretty much knew why they were there. They were trying to find Sam Gerard. Uh, they, they seemingly backed off for a while after the letter, and then they sneaked into the county and took the guy off without the sheriff knowing. And, and so, yes, the sheriff can do something, and he could even do something now, but it would be extremely bold at this point, and I don't know if he could get a judge to give him a court order in the lines of maybe a habeas corpus thing or that – he wants to investigate Sam Gerard for something else, and he could get a court order and say, hey, I need so-and-so, and if a judge signed it, he could probably go get him. Uh, I doubt if he would get a judge to uh, participate with that or cooperate with that, but it, there is some things uh, sheriffs who have that extra ounce of courage could probably do. But in this particular case, what we really hope for is, as you read a minute ago, that in the meantime, we would really like uh, President Trump to grant executive clemency to these people uh, and get these people out from underneath uh, their felonies. And uh, that really applies to Cox and Kettler, who are both law-abiding citizens. Kettler is a former Marine himself of eight years. He's a disabled veteran. Cox uh, currently has a daughter serving as a Marine. And then we want to go and tell these people, uh, because they made a suppressor, which is a silencer for a firearm, uh, that completely is protected by Kansas state law, which uh, state made a law in 2013 stating that the Second Amendment would be respected, including by federal agents, and that if federal agents came in and tried to enforce laws that were clearly contrary to the Second Amendment, that those agents could be charged with a felony. Instead, they took it as a challenge. Eric Holder was arguing back and forth in the press with the governor of Kansas a couple of years ago. And uh, I think I think this was Obama's administration's way of saying, look, we're the boss, we're the federal government. 
we're going to come in and arrest people who do this, and we're going to teach you guys a lesson. First of all, the federal government has no jurisdiction over this. It does not. It it does not uh, comply with interstate commerce as the product was made in Kansas, manufactured in Kansas, sold in Kansas, and remained in Kansas after the purchase. Kettler only got charged because he purchased one, and a local uh, lieutenant in the sheriff's office also purchased one. When he found out Kettler got arrested, he went and threw his in the river, and we and we all don't know that, and it's it's very well documented. But uh, he didn't get charged because I guess he got rid of it. And I guess they couldn't prove that he had it, even though his name's on the rolls that he did. So anyway, uh, to make a long story short, these two law-abiding patriotic Americans uh, went to trial. They were found guilty by a jury that was misled by a judge. And I still blame juries for that. Citizens should know their duty to stand against a judge and against a charge and against laws that are contrary to our Constitution. Uh, but the judge manipulated the jury, and they found him guilty. And then the judge, uh, on sentencing uh, last week, uh, tried to soften his own conscience. Say, hey, I'm not going to give any jail time. I'm not going to give any fines. Uh, I think Keller ended up with a uh, $100 fine. The other guy, Cox, did $800 fine. No jail time, two years on probation. And uh, But this is it. Tom, they're felons for the rest of their lives unless they get executive clemency. There is no expungement for felonies of, of the federal government. And this is just so ridiculous. And when I was in Washington, D.C. all last week, I pointed these things out to several congressmen and senators. And most of them, I'll tell you right now, were just too busy fighting these ridiculous partisan battles that are going on in Washington to pay any attention to the plight of these federal victims. And it really, it really enraged me. There were some that were on our side and, and were legitimately available to us. Uh, Congressman Andy Biggs from Arizona just barely got elected. He's only been in there a little bit. He says, you know what? Why do we even have the FDA out there making arrests and having their own investigations like this? He said, this is bull. And and he he's following up on that. We're also trying to get a hold of Jason Chaffetz, Congressman from Utah, who is on the oversight committee. And we're trying to get help. The main thing, Tom, if you have any contacts with anybody who can get to the president and put this in front of him, we believe that he would be outraged by these incidents and that he would do something about it. And I believe on several of these, he would issue immediate pardons. Uh, and especially when, before we started this broadcast, you and I were talking about Kenneth Wright, uh, who he's the only one on that list who I don't know personally. The rest of them I know personally. Every one of these cases, I know. I've been in the Hammonds' home in Burns, Oregon. I know Susie Hammond, and I know her other sons who aren't in prison. Her husband being basically given a life sentence because he, has to, he had to go back for the same charge he'd already served time for and for which he paid a $400,000 fine to the government. Everything looked like it was settled, and the government goes back and says, no, uh, the judge erred and gave him too much time. Well, the Ninth Circuit should have said, look, whether the judge erred or not, these people have served their sentence and paid their fine. It's over, and we're not going to commit a horrible double jeopardy on these people just because the judge erred. And so, bam, they went back to prison because of the stupid Ninth Circuit, which is the worst court in America, the most leftist communist court in America, and they sent these two good people back to prison because when you charge somebody with domestic terrorism and they're found guilty, they have to go for five years. So it, they've now served another year. They have another about three and a half, four years each. And uh, Dwight Hammond will be 80 years old when he gets out. And I'm sorry, these outrages are just too much for me to take anymore. Uh, the Sam Gerard case was the one that broke the camel's back for me. But I think if anybody wants to see how outrageous and out of control, our federal bureaucrats have become, just look on YouTube of Kenneth Wright, who had his home raided by a SWAT team, ransacked, kicked in the door, almost a, a, basically a no-knock warrant, kicking in his door, raiding his home, ransacking his house, throwing him out in the front yard with only his underwear on, terrorizing his two children, going after a warrant, uh, a search warrant, for his estranged wife, who didn't even live there anymore. And Tom, 
Do you want to know the crime that she committed, that they did all of this to Kenneth Wright and his children? It was that she did not pay her student loan. Oh, man. Now, you, this story was done by the local news. The local news story is on YouTube. You can look at it yourself. And I'm telling you, every American should be outraged. And yes, we're going to spend uh, basically full time on this until we get a resolution in Washington, D.C. And you know me, Tom, I believe in state sovereignty and state nullification big time. But on this one, I don't see where the states could stop this now that people have already been charged and raided and victimized. It's going to have to be somebody in Congress and in the Justice Department, and I hope Jeff Sessions does something about this, but the ultimate immediate uh, remedy would be a presidential pardon from President Donald Trump. And that's what we're hoping and praying for at this time. But we're working our tails off uh, to try to get this in front of him. I even walked into Trump Towers last Thursday, hoping that somebody would deliver this to one of the Trump children there and get it in front of President Trump. And man, after I waded through all the security, including a SWAT team, New York Police Department uh, security, hotel security, Secret Service, and personal security, I was told that somebody has to call them or they won't see anybody. So in other words, somebody like you would need to call them because you're good friends with them and say, hey, Sheriff Max, okay, uh, please let him up and uh, give him a few minutes. And we tried to make that happen. And everybody that we knew, Sheriff Clark, Sheriff Arpaio, uh, Arpaio said he didn't know any of the numbers uh, for them. And Sheriff Clark was uh, out of the country at the time with his wife. And so we've opened a few doors and I feel encouraged by some of the contacts we made. But I also am still appalled that a lot more people aren't more concerned about this, especially our politicians. You know, Sheriff Mack, your description of what's happened to these people calls to mind a very interesting term that was coined by Sam Francis, the term anarcho-tyranny, which is what he believed had overtaken the U.S. Anarcho because people committing real-life crimes, like, for example, the rioters in Berkeley that did property damage to 15 businesses. Right. There's no arrests of those people. No. So, so anarcho. But tyranny, when you're dealing with actual normal people who are obeying all the laws – uh, and who run afoul of a bureaucrat because of some inane rule no one in his right mind would be aware of, would uh, abide, you know, you know, it makes, in other words, regular people get caught in the crosshairs and people who are actual criminals, well, we look the other way, we make excuses for them, the police stand down. Right. It's, a, it, it's completely upside down. It is. And our government has been heading that way, as you well know. Uh, for quite some time. And that's the reason you've written some of the books you have. And you've pointed out the most immediate solution when these things start is for the state to nullify some of this crap. I totally believe that. You and I are on the same boat. In fact, I think you and I are probably the two biggest proponents of that nationwide. The sheriff should step in. The governor should step in. The state legislature should step in. And as a matter of fact, Madison and Jefferson said that's what the state's job is, to defend us from uh, the tyranny of the federal government and the overreach of the federal government, to protect us from being victimized, as Madison said, by the federal government. And my Supreme Court decision, the only time a sheriff ever sued the federal government and won a case at the U.S. Supreme Court, it basically says the same thing, uh, that different governments will control each other and that uh, a healthy balance of power between the feds and the states will reduce the risk of tyranny and abuse from either front. Well, the question I have for the world, uh, especially anybody in America, do we have that healthy balance of power today between the states and the federal government? That's clearly absolutely no. And so how do we get it back? The states must exercise their power uh, granted and guaranteed in the 10th Amendment and making sure that the federal government understands that they have only limited, discrete, and enumerated powers as granted in the Constitution. And anything outside that, the states must stand and, and make a difference. But if the states don't enforce the Tenth Amendment and state sovereignty, who's going to enforce them? Certainly not the federal government. And as you said, too, state sovereignty exists 
only protect the sovereignty of the individual and and not the borders of the of the geographical borders of the state. And so we really need people who one know in the state what this is and two have the courage to implement it. And I and I'm I'm really starting to feel so much compassion and empathy for these victims. And what we do know that as I was mentioning alluding to earlier, maybe I didn't make this clear, we only detect about 10% of the crime in law enforcement. We only detect about 10% of the crime. So yeah, 90% of the, most of the crime goes undetected. And, and so crime doesn't pay. Actually, most of the time it does. Most crime does pay. And so we know that the federal government has committed uh, at least uh, nine times this uh, amount of crimes other places. And I think it's much more than that. I think there's thousands of people who have been so victimized. And we see every day, Tom, where another person is let out of prison because after 20, 25 years, finally, technology catches up and proves through DNA analysis that these people are innocent. We don't even need that proof. We have it already. And on its face, these cases are so ridiculous and absurd and unconstitutional that we have bureaucrats proud that they're making our nation safer because they have an Amish farmer in prison looking at 48 years because he made a salve out of chickweed. Come on. Now, Tom, we would love people to donate to what we're doing. We're doing this full time. And yes, we need it. And I can't think of any better cause for people to donate to help us free our neighbors, innocent Americans who have committed no crime, have committed no wrong, and in some cases have been totally uh, tyrannized and victimized by federal bureaucrats. And we want that reversed and we need help doing it. And we'll be love everybody to go to the website. Now you can see what I did the last week. If you go to the Freedom Coalition website and go to news, you can see uh, the report there on news of everything I did last week. I'm gonna be going back to Washington. We might send a bunch of us there to really uh, pound the halls of Congress. And I don't know if you've been there before, but man, it, it takes a lot of energy. There's a bunch of them. Uh, it's a very grueling process. And uh, there's 100 Senate offices and 435 congressional offices. And somewhere, somehow, we've got to get somebody to get, help us get this over to the White House and or get it up to uh, the Trump Towers and somebody uh, take that up for us or uh, allow me to get in there, which I'll be happy to go back and do, because these people really don't have any other alternative. They don't have any place else to go. Most of them don't have any money. Uh, most of them are the, some of the most defenseless among us, like the Amish. And, and it really is that the uh, governments, some state and some federal, are declaring war on the Amish because they don't pasteurize their milk. And we're certainly not going to allow that. The freedom of choice that we, eat, we each could make in this country as to whether or not we want pasteurized milk or not uh, is another story uh, and a side story of all this. But you know what? We want common sense. We want freedom. We want the rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, which is this is the basis for. This is their pursuit of happiness. And our government is destroying their liberty, destroying their lives, and destroying their pursuit of happiness. And just as you alluded to, that's the complete antithesis of what our government is supposed to be doing. Well, I'd like to tell people that thefreedomcoalition.com is the place to go to find out more about this, read the petition, sign it. Make a donation if you like. I, I note a lot of people here are people I've heard of, people who are listed as signatories. Of course, people you and I have worked with for many years. Also interesting to see Ted Nugent among the signers. <laughs> yes. In fact, Ted and I are going to do a, a uh, video about this uh, pretty soon. I'm going to be going to Waco. Uh, he lives near there, has a ranch near there. And Ted and I have become pretty good friends over the years. He first interviewed me when I was still sheriff when I was suing the Clinton administration on the Brady Bill back in the 90s, he and I met, uh, and then um, I did his radio show in Detroit way back when. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So, yes, and then, of course, you know Judge uh, Andrew Napolitano very well. Sure, there he is right up toward the top yep. on this list. So, uh, so in other words, with there's many, many good, decent people here who can have no hesitation whatsoever about uh, helping out. And we would like to have you on there. Uh, uh, yeah, add me, sure. Okay. Yeah, by all means. Yeah, thefreedomcoalition.com is the website. And another thing, too, is anybody that has any ideas about how we get 
in front of Trump, if you know people, or an email to somebody. Uh, I've sent a, an email to Hope Hicks and have not uh, got any reply. Uh, I've been in contact personally with the Washington Post. They might be doing a story on this pretty soon. I think that would get a lot of attention. But if they end up not doing a story, I'll be one, very disappointed. And two, we're kind of going, we're back at the uh, beginning. I've called Hannity's producers. They have poo-pooed this. But I admit they're, they've got a lot on their plate right now, especially with all these crazy things going in Washington. But still, nothing is more important than this. I mean, Trump's problem with Flynn resigning or innocent people being thrown in prison by bureaucrats. I mean, still, this those other stories just pale in comparison. But I'll tell you why this should be a, a real winner for him. I mean, not only because these people who are in trouble are – Basically, his people. Right. The, these are the kind of people who supported him. So if 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 he stands and for them, that's what we'd expect him to do. But more than that, you know, he got into some trouble in the way he's been handling the federal agencies, executive agencies, and the way he he supposedly muzzled the EPA and whatever. If he could turn the tables on them and say, "Well, everybody, here's how they've been treating our fellow Americans." You probably didn't read about these incidents in the New York Times. Yeah. He turns that to his benefit. I mean, it seems like a clear win all around. There's no there's no downside to this. No, none whatsoever. I, I just can't see it that, yes, we want the Amish farmer to stay in prison and he should answer for his problem. And if he doesn't, you know, respond properly to these people, no wonder he's in trouble, you know. And you don't get to just go run them up making any sab you want. You know? <laughs> How stupid yeah. is that going to sound, you know. I yeah. mean, it does sound pretty stupid, but yeah. you're right. And, and I appreciate that perspective. Well, listen, I, I hope people do uh, check it out. I'm, uh, I've told them it's thefreedomcoalition.com, but I also want to link to it. I'll link to that at tomwoods.com slash 850, because that's our episode number. And also there, I'll link to the previous time you were on when we did actually talk about your own history and, and some of the things that you did and how you got to be pretty well known for the reason that you briefly mentioned here, namely your Supreme Court case. That was all very interesting stuff. So that'll also be on the same page. Well, best of luck, Sheriff Mack, and thanks for your time. Appreciate it, Tom. Appreciate the support very much and the time to be with you. All right, that's it for today. Tomorrow, Kevin Gutzman joins us to talk about his brand new book from a huge, big time publisher. Uh, Kevin just keeps going from one success to another called Thomas Jefferson Revolutionary. Great stuff tomorrow. If you're enjoying the show, join the elite as a supporting listener over at supportinglisteners.com. Thanks for listening. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.